This is Mark Bell, and we are at Slingshot World Headquarters. I'm going to talk to you today about my favorite topic, that's keto and intermittent fasting. A lot of questions come in to me, and the question I get asked probably the most, probably, yeah, probably two, two questions that are kind of similar. People want to know, like, if I count stuff. How many meals a day do you eat when you do intermittent fasting? People also want to know, how much protein do you eat? How much fat do you eat? How many carbs do you eat? What's the deal with net carbs? People are asking all these kind of questions, right? I don't count or track anything. I'm not an accountant. I am a lifter. I am somebody that loves fitness. I love to exercise and I love to eat, but I don't count anything. I'm not a big proponent of like weighing my food or calorie tracking or tracking my macros in, in any way. Uh, I'm not necessarily against it. If it's something you found beneficial, then more power to you. But the way that I look at it is, if you walked around with a bucket all day, and I, I kept pouring water into this bucket, and occasionally you would pour the water out, would we continually weigh the water that I was pouring in and out of this bucket all day long? Or would we simply just weigh the bucket at the beginning or at the end of every single day? I say weigh your bucket, your bucket being yourself. Just weigh yourself. Don't really worry, concern yourself about uh, the food that you put in your body. Um, you need to worry about the types of food you put in your body, but you don't need to worry about how much they weigh and how, much, how many calories are in them. In my opinion, uh, it's something you could spend your time uh, better doing something else. So the way that I track things, and the only thing I track, is my results, and I track my progress. And I do so by looking into the mirror and also weighing myself. I'll, almost, I'll weigh myself almost every single day, with the exception of if I'm like off diet or off plan, I don't bother because I know that I'm going to like look at it and be like, eh, that's not great. But if I'm trying to lose weight and I'm trying to trend downward, I'll just continually make sure that the scale is trending downward. Now here's the diet I think everyone's going to land on. All the YouTubers out there, I think everyone's going to land on this. I think everybody in fitness is going to land on the same thing. And that's what I've been doing for a few years now. And that's a combination of intermittent fasting and a carnivore slash keto genic style diet and the reason is is that once you start once you find this diet and once you try it then you're gonna really love it because what you'll find is that you're not as hungry anymore from less food you don't have the same cravings that you had in the past you feel more clear for me I don't eat throughout the entire day we get to the end of the day and all my work is done my workout is done my work here at slingshot world headquarters is done any interviews I had to do for the day, any podcasts I had to do for the day, any meetings that I had to do for the day, once that's all done and once I get back together with my family at the end of the day, that's when I get to enjoy food and that's when I get to enjoy family time. And you know what? That has been amplified times 10. That feels so amazing to get, uh, get home from a full day of work, have all my training behind me, behind me have everything all done and then I get to see my two beautiful children and I get to hang out with my wife and eat some food we may go somewhere we may eat at home now what the hell do you eat on a ketogenic style diet what the hell do you eat when you're doing uh, intermittent fasting well with fasting I normally choose not to eat anything however sometimes I might have something in my coffee maybe I have uh, some heavy cream or maybe I have some MCT oil or butter in it like you may have heard from uh, people sharing information about bulletproof coffee. Uh, you can read in my book, The War on Carbs, I talk about a coffee fast. But typically when I fast, I just don't have any calories at all. That would be something that would be great for a lot of you to try to follow, for a lot of you to try to endure. But if it feels like it's too hard, go ahead and throw in that coffee with a little bit of fat in it. I also, on occasion, will throw in some bone broth, and bone broth is, is, is very low calorie. It's pretty much just protein, and it just gives you something to do if you're starting to get really hungry. But what happens with intermittent fasting, sometimes people are like, dude, there is no way I could go without eating carbs. There is no way I could go, there's no way I could go without eating food for 18 hours. That doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to you because you haven't really tried it before. You haven't endured it before. It's almost like if we said, hey, look, we're going to go run a marathon. You'd be like, well, I haven't trained for that at all. This is something you can train your body to do, the hunger hormone you have in your body. The, the hormones in your body uh, that tell you that you're hungry, a lot of times these are false readings. A lot of times when you get hit with a hunger hormone in the, in the morning or you get hit with a huge surge of hunger in the morning, a lot of times that's fake. A lot of times it's just poking at you. It's like, yo, you should eat. Hey, 
you should eat and it keeps poking at you over and over again and it's actually not true it's actually a false reading you're actually not hungry because guess what if you just look down and you look at your gut or dudes even guys you look at your boobs and you're like oh my god or you got some side fat going on it's like you got plenty of food sitting on your body to last you days days and days and days and in some cases even longer right so we don't necessarily need food but we want it and i understand that a hundred percent because i used to be heavy i used to be 330 pounds i got myself into a tough patch a tough spot uh when i was competing in powerlifting and, and everything to me was to be as strong as possible so i put everything i had into that and i didn't care and i got as big and strong as i possibly could but i also got addicted to food and trying to figure out how to get rid of that addiction was absolutely maddening it made me crazy but what got rid of it for me i started with a paleo diet then i started shifting in towards more of a ketogenic style diet and then once i did that i started shifting into intermittent fasting so i went through and i did it in stages and now i could eat i could eat eggs at eight o'clock in the morning and not eat again for another day or two and not even really care about it i mean i will feel hungry but I've gotten my body fat adapted. I got my body used to running off of fat. And because of that, my glucose levels aren't spiking up and down. I don't get hangry. I don't get frustrated if I'm not eating. If I went too many days, maybe I would, right? But I don't have the same spikes. When I was heavier and I was running off of sugar, when I was burning sugar all the time, I would be really just flat out pissed off if I didn't get an opportunity to eat. If I didn't eat for three hours or four hours, holy cow, I would be mad. I would start to get hangry. My wife will tell you, I turned into a bitch. It was bad. I got really irritable, really irritated. But through this style of diet, through a ketogenic style diet, through intermittent fasting, um, I think that many of you can enjoy the same results. In fact, I know that you can enjoy the same results. If you go on Instagram and you hashtag war on carbs, you'll see the 45,000 plus people that are on there right now that have had crazy results. You want motivation? You want to be inspired? Don't just take it from me. You might be like, oh, Mark all those steroids and he's rich and whatever, right? And you could throw whatever shade you want at me, right? But what about these other people? There's a lot of people out there that are making huge, huge progress. We had a guy in here the other day, he weighed 485 pounds, he's 435 pounds. I realized that's 50 pounds and I realized that he has a long way to go, but we have a history of helping people lose 100 pounds, 200 pounds. We have a guy in here right now that lost 190 pounds and guess what he's gonna be doing in March? He's gonna be doing a powerlifting meet. How empowering is that and how crazy is that? But just through some small changes in his diet, he doesn't count calories, he doesn't track anything, he doesn't weigh anything. Again, I'm not saying that you don't, I'm not saying that that is something that I think you should stop if you've had success with it because success equals progress to me. And I, I, that's all I want. That's all I want for everybody. That's all I'm trying to do here. I want success and I want progress for each and every single one of you. So if you found uh, that it does help you to track then that's okay, but I think people have too much anxiety over it. I think people are too worried about it. And when you worry about something, I think that sometimes can be a block. I sometimes think that could be something that's in your way. So if you're trying to lose weight and you're getting really frustrated with it and you've tried to count calories and you've tried a bunch of different diets, this is the diet that I want you to try. I want you to try a ketogenic style diet. I want you to eat uh, fatty meats, eggs, cheese, Stick to that the best that you can. And what you'll find that when you start to eat those foods, you're not as hungry and you end up automatically intermittent fasting. It's weird because you're like, you're like, oh shit, I, I didn't really eat that much today. And being a former fat guy myself, that's not like the fact that I'm sitting here ex trying to explain this to you guys right now, it, it, it blows my mind. It's hard for me to even like say the words because I feel like it's not true, but I know that it's true because I'm experiencing it myself. Guys, this is a diet for you. I want you to give it a try. I'm not trying to sell you anything. You can buy my book. You can buy The War on Carbs. You can buy Jack and Tan. You can check these things out. You can buy Jack and Tan. You can, you can check these things out. They're on my website, markbellslingshot.com, but you don't have to buy them. You don't need them to make progress. You don't need them to, to have the success that you wanna have. 
but you can make some small changes today. You can start embarking on a 10 minute walk. You can start trying to ha be on a ketogenic style diet. You can start to employ some of the things that I mentioned today. It doesn't take me any extra effort. It doesn't take me any extra time. You know how long it takes me to meal prep when I'm fasting? <laughs> Zero time. That's how long it takes. If you have a nine to five job and you're using that as a block, oh my God, I, can't, I don't know what to bring with me. And I always eat burritos when I go to work because there's that crazy, amazing Mexican restaurant down the street from me. You don't have to do that. You don't have to be trapped by that. You don't have to be ruled by food anymore. You can make these decisions. You can start to put in an effort towards doing a ketogenic style diet. Follow along at Mark Smelly Bell on Instagram. Follow along right here on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna keep giving you more and more information whether you like it or not. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. I'll catch you all later.